marksmanship, clean living, or thrills, follow the adventures of Frank Farrell. In the last episode, Pedro returned to the Newman Ranch and put into action the scheme arranged by Blackie Pemberton. You will recall Pedro informed Helen that her father had been badly hurt and with that falsehood induced her to accompany him. And as the last episode closed, the two rode swiftly away on Pedro's horse. Rosetta, knowing this danger, started at once on foot to find Frank Farrell. You will recall Frank, Mr. Grover, and Spud had set out to recover the horses stolen from the ranch by Blackie's men. They found the horse thieves encamped in a ravine, and by a clever ruse, succeeded in getting the drop on them and recovering the stolen horses. As our present episode opens, it is early morning of the following day, and our friends are still quite a few miles from the ranch. They have been riding hard all night, but have now stopped to rest the horses. The coach is speaking. We've been pretty lucky, boys. We haven't lost many of them. Those that did get away will go back to the stream on Mr. Newman's ranch later. Boy, this is my idea of real life. Isn't it a swell morning? Oh, I feel great. Boy, you can say the craziest things. Here we've been riding nearly all night, chasing out after crazy horses that don't know enough to stay with a crowd. And you say you're on a level. Don't you feel hungry? Boy, I'm so hungry. Gosh, say let's kill a horse. You know, I've heard a lot about a horse's neck. Let's try one. Horse's neck? Horse's neck isn't anything you eat. I've heard of a drink being called a horse's neck, though. You mean... Ah, no, I can't swallow that. You say you drink a horse's neck? That's right. I think it would be much easier to drink a horse's neck than it would be to eat one. Coach, I suppose I'll have to be polite and say that you're making a willful misstatement. If anyone but you had told me that, I'd say they were lying faster than a horse can trot. Just the same, that's the truth. Listen, I know a whole lot more about every kind of neck than you do, and I've never seen one yet that I'd care to swallow. All right, skip it. Let's talk about something else. All right, let's change the subject. Uh, let's talk about something to eat. A horse. How do you feel, Frank? <clears throat> Fine. Great. Say, Spud, I never did get tired of those bandits. Well, you see, one of the horses broke away right after you two left me. Well, I tied up the other two and took out after the one on foot. He kept going and going. All of a sudden, I looked down a little hill, and I, and I saw a bull and the bandits fixing up that fellow's hand. You were there before we got the drop on them? Yeah, sure. Why, when I heard the coach say, throw him up, I thought those men had me, and I started to do it. Then I saw what was up. Gosh, when I saw it was going to be a gun battle between you, I, I did some quick thinking, and I, I thought if I'd shoot from behind them, it'd scare them and they'd quit. Well, you scared them, all right. Yes, and you saved some lives, because I really think Bull and his men are going to shoot it out with us. Of course they were. Well, I think we'd better be on our way. The horses have been grazing quite a while. Now we'd better get to the ranch. I know they'll be worried about us being away all night. Yeah, I guess you're right. We'd better get started. Oh, say, Coach, look. See running down that rise there? It's a woman. Is that all right? Say, that's... Well, blister my stomach if it ain't my little bowl of chili Rosita. Say, I wonder what's up now. I don't know, but it doesn't look good to me. Well, she sure looks good to me. Maybe she's bringing us our breakfast. Great, Scott. Do you imagine that girl has been running all the way from the ranch? She's been running all right. Rosita, what is it? Anything wrong? Oh, 
Frank Farrell, Mr. Grover. Stand still, you oh. little Mexican jumping bean. Tell us what's wrong. And the little girl, Helen, she, she went. Yes, what about her? Pedro, he keep his word. He take her away early this morning. What? He came to house when you all be away, and he take her away on his horse. I know not why she go with him. He must tell her big lie. We've got to get going, Coach. Yeah, I'll say we've got to get going. Oh. I knew I should have taken care of that guy a long time ago. Have you any idea where he took her, Rosita? I think I make pretty good guess. Pedro, he tell me he do this thing, that he do it for Blackie. Blackie? Blackie Pemberton? See, see. But why should Blackie want to... You see, Blackie, he will he will save girl from Pedro. And then she thinks Blackie her friend. He take her to his house. No one know where she is. When father tried to find her, Blackie tell him he know where she is, but he take big money to get her back. When father pay money for girl, no more money he have left to save ranch. Blackie, he get ranch. I see it, coach. Let's get going. Do you know where Blackie lives? I'll say I do. All right now, Rosita. You get on Spud's horse with him, and he'll take you back to the ranch. Oh, no, no. I take other horse. Any horse. Wild horse. I don't care. I not ride with him. He called me jumping bean. Oh, so you won't ride with me, huh? Miss Paprika thinks she's too good. Oh, quiet, Spud. You do as I say, Rosita. You ride behind Spud. Yeah, and be sure you hold on to me tight, too. Get your arms way around me. Oh, Mr. Grover, I have to do this. Well, then, you ride in the saddle, and Spud will ride in back of you. So it's me. I'll get to do the holding myself, then. No, no, no. I ride behind. He ride in saddle. All right, now, Frank. We'll get the horses started on the way. Spud will do the best he can and take them on in. You and I will cut off and pay Mr. Blanky Pemberton an early morning call. Okay, let's get going. Here, Rosita. I'll boost you on Spud's horse. There you go. Gracias. All right, Frank. Get on your horse. Spud, you do your best and get those horses to the ranch. I'll get them there. Don't worry. If he not know how, I tell him. Hey, you, I'm not going to stand for no backseat driving. Now get that. Hold me, hot tamale. We're going to town. See you later, boys. Well, here's Blackie's place. Uh, not much life around here. Most of his hands were with Bull McGuire, I guess. Well, we may just as well walk up and knock at the door. Right. Well, I hope Rosita gave us the right dope. We can't accuse people unless we're sure. Knock again. There must be someone here. Oh, here comes someone. I hear him walking. Yeah? Who are you? What do you want? Hello, Blackie. What's wrong? You seem kind of nervous. Oh, hello, Grover. What's on your mind? Nothing much. Aren't you going to ask us in? Can't we talk out here? This morning air's great. We're kind of tired, Blackie. Been riding all night. Thought you might offer us a chair. What's the matter with the porch? Sit down. Let's get down to cases, Coach. Mr. Pemberton, we're here for the girl. Girl? What girl are you talking about? I guess you don't know. We're after Helen Newman. Helen Newman? I don't know the girl. Oh, yes, you do. Oh, now I get you. You mean old man Newman's daughter? Yes, that's the one. Well, why come here? I don't know anything about her. I was just getting ready to ride over to the ranch to see if the old man had the money for me. I have a mortgage on his property, you know. You bet your life we know. Oh, you do. You're kind of a smart guy, aren't you? What are you, grub line writer? I don't get you. No, he's not a floater. He's a member of the Newman party. What's it all about, Grover? What's sticking in your craw? He's just telling you in a blunt way that the girl is missing. And we're over here to find out what you know about it. What I know about it? Say, you've got your nerve coming over here and accusing me of anything like that. And don't think for a minute you're going to get away with it. Hello, Frank. Mr. Grover. I thought I heard voices. Uh, How did you boys know where I was? Why, we... Oh. So she wasn't here, huh, Blackie? What's the idea, Blackie? What's your game? Game? I don't know what you're talking about. I rescued this girl this morning from that rat, Pedro. That's right, boys, he did. Well, Pedro came to the ranch early this morning. He told me that Father had been badly hurt and offered to take me to him. It wasn't long before I discovered that he'd lied to me. I tried to get away, but he wouldn't let me. Mr. Pemberton happened along at that time and saw Pedro taking me to the hills, and he rescued me. Well, now, wasn't that nice of him? You were just as safe with Pedro. Frank, how can you say such a thing? We know a few things that you don't, Helen. Why didn't you take her home instead of bringing her here, Pemberton? Because my place was closer. She was unnerved. She needed rest, so I brought her here. He drove to our ranch right away to notify someone where I was. Yeah? Just who did you notify, Blackie? Why, uh, no one was there. I I didn't notify anyone. But you told me you notified my father. I told you that to keep you from worrying. I went to the ranch, but I couldn't find anyone. I couldn't stay there all day, you know. You'd have had a right, don't you? You could have left a note or something. I didn't think of that. 
How do you know I didn't leave a note? Don't make me laugh. Say, I don't like your tone, you young squirt. Yeah, and there's a lot of things about you I don't like either. Come on, Helen, you're going home. All right, I'll be back in just a minute. Oh, just a minute, Miss Newman. I want to talk to you. Come on, Coach, we got to watch him. I'm with you. Now, just a minute. Did anyone ask you to come in here? No, and we're not waiting for an invitation either. Listen, Mr. Wise Guy. You're as much out of place here as a tenderfoot is at Spring Brandon. Now get out of here before I put my brand on you. You too, Grover. As soon as Miss Newman is ready, we'll leave. What if I tell you she ain't leaving with you? That's just what we thought. We know your game, Blackie, and you're not going to get away with it. I told you to get out of here, didn't I? This is my house. You forced your way in here, didn't you? Now we'll let somebody carry you out. Oh, Mr. Pemberton! Blackie, you dirty skunk! Oh, she's reaching for his gun! No, you don't! Oh, you're looking for something, are you? All right, you'll get it! Frank! Frank! Please stop! Mr. Pemberton, coach! Mr. Pemberton, you, you heard him! Why, you dirty sidewinder, come into my house looking for trouble, will you? All right, you started it. Now I'll finish it. Jackie, no, no, don't shoot. Please, please. Frank! Oh! oh Frank, you, you struck him just in time. He was going to shoot the coach. You all right, coach? Yeah, yeah I'm okay. Thanks, fella. You sure cooled him at that table. I didn't want to do that, but it was him or you, and it's a cinch I wasn't going to see him get you. Is he hurt? Uh, he's knocked out for the time oh. being. He'll be coming to in a few minutes. Well, I guess we've taken care of everything here. So let's go. You ready, Helen? Frank, did, did you find the horses? I'll say we did. They're on their way back to the ranch right now. Oh, that's wonderful. Dad will be so relieved. Oh, by the way, you haven't seen him, have you? No, we haven't. Why? Well, they left early this morning. Dad and Jim did. They were trying to find horses so they could follow your trail. Well, no doubt they're back at the ranch by now. Well, things are coming our way, I guess. The horses back to the ranch. Helen safe. Boy, it's our turn to howl. I'd call it a good morning's work. Now, well, suppose we get back to the ranch. As Spud would say, I'm starving. Mm, and so am I. You youngsters get the horses untied and I'll be right with you. I'll wait until Blackie comes too. He may not know it, but he's going to the sheriff's office. I think we've got the man who's caused most of the trouble around these parts the past few years. Now the ranchers may get some peace. Oh, I can never thank you boys enough for all you've done for Dad and the rest of the ranchers out here. Oh, that's all right. It's been a pleasure. All right, come on, Helen. I'll wait for you on the outside, Coach. Again, Frank Farrell and his friends are happy. The horses are returned, Mr. Newman assured of the money with which to pay off the mortgage, and Blackie Pemberton, head of the band of outlaws, about to be brought to justice. Indeed, Frank Farrell and his friends have enjoyed real adventure. 